the live performance is the dragon that I'm chasing the whole time. I feel like live, when people see us, um, it, there's a lot going on, so it's, a, it's a, an amazing experience. Wow, green lights music. I'm sitting out with you guys. This is pretty awesome. Like, for me, because I mean, I've, I've followed you since Abstract Giants and like you, your many musical ventures over the years that I now feel this is coming full circle and this is kind of cool. And so I have some questions that I would like to uh, pick your brains on. So here we go, guys. We'll do this and we'll do it as easily as possible. <laughs> Collectively, you guys all have over two decades of making music. In that time, you've had a multitude of performances. Is there any singular performance that you could pinpoint that stands out head and shoulder above all others? Uh, for me personally, it was uh, we had opened up for uh, uh, the RZA, which he actually didn't get a chance to perform because there was a fire uh, that happened at that show. But this particular show, it was magical because uh, we've performed at so many venues. We're at the House of Blues, which I thought was one of the one of the biggest venues that we had uh, 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 performed in, and we were just on point because during during that time prior to Green Lights with Abstract, we were a solid group. We vibed off each other. We were just in the zone, and like you know, just like tracks were just seamless. It, it was like that vibe was just. I was like, like, yeah, like, we made it. We were opening up for RZA. <laughs> it was like, oh, we made it! <laughs> but yeah, for me, uh, that's what it was. I'm just... uh, I want to add that not our most recent show, but the one before that at Chop Shop, that was probably the most memorable show I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Uh, as, like, green lights as a whole, we were all there. In terms of just, like, like a mix of the venue, the energy was just felt really right oh, that night. Man. So I think we can all, like, Think back really? to that night and like feel really yeah, good about totally. that. There was Absolutely. definitely a, a synergy that was uh, palpable. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, it was. You could feel it in the air. Um, in between all of the people who were on the stage, our family, and uh, the crowd was incredible. Sound was great. Yeah, all great right. show. Do you guys uh, prefer the? Uh, the intimate connection you have with the audience in a, a live setting or the creative freedom you have when you're in the studio coming up with new music? I can comment on that. Um, I think that there are two very different feelings. Um, live performance is absolutely amazing because there is a mirroring effect where you're feeding off of the people who are there um, the way that they feel about what you're doing. Um, working in the studio is a very intimate uh, process. Um, you're able to be very vulnerable and explore and be uh, in a way just in the, in the moment without worrying about whether you're going to be perfect or not. And that is, a, it's a great feeling. And um, mistakes are allowed. <laughs> it, it gives us time to actually grow and expected and yeah oh, you know and, and like experiment and to like you know try something new try something yeah. different judgment is encouraged <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. do you feel you get a better chance to polish when you're in the studio or when you're in front of a live crowd and in your mind you're on the fly like oh that's not working let me try this you know what I mean oh man I mean I, 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 I can only speak for myself but um, I don't know that's it's such a loaded question because, you know, when we're in the studio or or just, you know, just chilling amongst yourselves, we're, you know, either just vibing off or like freestyling. But then even at a live show, it's like, like you want to be in the pocket, but keep it loose. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's, you're, you're, you're getting the best of both worlds. So for me personally, I like it both. I, I like both. But I, 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 I love recording, but I like being with, being with the crew yeah. and, and live setting, showing that off, oh, right. you know, and being able to express that. But. Yeah, there's definitely a, an approach, I think, that, especially with the band, that we take as far as a, uh, a, a, 
kind of a well, seeing what our crowd is, so knowing your audience. Uh, if there's a, a moment from your past, uh, going back all the way you can, um, that you could pinpoint uh, a time in your life where you fell in love not only with hip hop, but with just music in general, where you're just like, yeah, that's, that's, that's me, that's what I'm gonna do. Like, you knew. Um, well, for me, and I don't mean to speak over anybody else, but um, I there's an intersection between hip hop and just music in general and the live, um, the, the feeling that happened for me when I, I was about four years old and I saw uh, the talking heads at CBGB's and my dad was playing with them and Tina Weymouth was just slang on the bass. And... Um, you know, you? like mm. four. If you were in CBGB's at four years old? I was four, yeah. That's well, wild. Hilly Crystal was my rock and roll godfather. No earmuffs. <laughs> right. So uh, it, it, that's why I've got road. a 30% hearing loss at this point. <laughs> but um, I just remember watching them jam, and the crowd was a mix of people who were hip hop fans and rock fans and just weird art people. And I felt like, wow. For me, it was like Thriller. Like that Ooh. was like the music yeah. video that kind of changed the game. Yes. And I remember me and one of my friends from uh, the neighborhood, we would like act out the whole video and do all the dance and stuff and the, the whole mm. beginning part and everything. Cause it was like a mini movie. It was bigger than a video. Mm. And it's like, oh, you can combine music and dance and all these different things and make it theatrical and tell a story and it's all like creates this this mm -hmm. this moment and that was yeah that was that for me iconic yeah, yeah. for sure so you guys all collectively have a, a storied history uh with Chicago hip-hop through through uh abstract giants and green lights music and bad wolf and all your other uh different musical ventures um over the years, uh, uh, I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying we're at the end. Um, but you've already achieved so much. Um, where, what, where are your aspirations driving you to? Like, what would you consider in your mind a, a good place to, to be directed towards? World that that tour. Europe, yeah, yeah. That European World tour, tour. Yeah. tour. <laughs> any, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I would say that um, you mentioned earlier that there are no bookends if you are a creative person. Um, I don't see us ever ceasing to be creative. Mm -hmm. um, so my hope is that we continue to grow together and learn each other and make better and better music, but also to explore different continents mm. as a band, mm. um, yeah. to be able to see new places and uh, really just enjoy huge, big, monumental experiences together, but really to keep creating great art. I think we push each other a lot to be creative and to reach new plateaus and we work really hard in the studio and we vibe really well and I think um, that unspoken bond and that creativity uh, gets stronger with every project that we put out um, and uh, thinking of plateaus and aspirations that we want to reach are more like um things that we realize that we got there through the work and we're because it's really hard to create things and you put it out into the stratosphere and you're not sure how people are reacting to it mm -hmm. um you don't have a connection to it but sometimes you have the moments that you're describing that give you a lot of inspiration and energy to continue to do it because it's really hard to chart the progress necessarily until uh, you kind of look back and you have a catalog of work and uh, a lot of experiences mm -hmm. that you're gaining a lot of uh, um, a lot of places that you didn't think you would be able to go to that you start 
naturally um, laying out the trajectory to continue to reach new plateaus. And I think part of that is the fact that we have all collectively or individually been doing this for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And you outlast people. So uh, in the genre of hip hop, mm -hmm. I know hip hop, I know artists' monikers are very important and carry with them a deep meaning. Uh, if I might be so bold as to ask, what is the genesis of each of yours? Am I Mine was homegrown since high school. You could probably figure out why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it kind of evolved as I like learned a little bit of Spanish, and then I flipped home to casa because I felt like it was like mm -hmm. that just needed to happen after a while. Most people were like, "Oh, you just smoke a lot of weed." I'm like, "Yeah, but still, like, there's more like." Is deeper than that, you know? A lot of it, it's just like creating things organically. That's kind of like the idea behind what I felt. You know, it's very, it's not actually that deep, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to write. All right. Uh, RP is PR backwards, so Puerto Rico. But it's also our Ron P. And kind of like a moniker I had with Abstract for a while. But really, it's kind of like a more of a tribute to my father than anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I go by Willow Wells, and uh, I was named by my mother. She gave us names uh, that she hoped would be a gift, kind of like a fairy godmother. Uh, a Willow being a very flexible but strong um, tree <laughs> and uh that gift has definitely kept on giving i i feel like i i roll with the winds so i go by my own name and i'm i'm okay with that mine was kind of changed throughout the years you know it's appetite but prior to that was uh a versus style, but there was another rapper with the same moniker so you know i wanted something that, that was more spoke true to me and you know, I eat a lot. People know that I eat. <laughs> uh, I have no shame of hiding, but hiding that. So, you know, I always felt that, you know, I, I was, I, I was never starving, but being an artist, being a starving artist, that's where appetite came in. But I spell it, you know, A B I T I G H T, which is a bit tight. I'm a bit uh, free, the, uh, the freestyle. Bit the freestyle's tight. about food game. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Style's about chicken or you know, it's I'm high. a yeah. lover of food. So the killer. starving artist. That, that's that's that's, that's kind of how that came about. All right. Yeah. Many many names I've gone through. <laughs> many many names. Yeah. Uh, but like currently, like Amanu is kind of a shortening of Amano Jaku, which is a Japanese word because of anime nerd. Uh, but it means like paradox and I also go by spider face, which I uh, used to have locks and pretty, pretty long locks. Mm. And my little knee, uh, my little cousin, I should say, she saw me for the first time with locks and she freaked out. She started crying. She's like, spider face, spider face. <laughs> <laughs> and she ran away and she no, was like, no. we had to coax her back. I was like, no, it's just hair. And you're like, and now that's my name forever. Yeah. Spider face. Yeah. Um, I go by Bob Rock because f*** you. <laughs> <laughs> As artists, I got to ask you, do you guys feel that uh, within the music industry, uh, you can only truly cut your teeth through live performance? Uh, no. Only because there, there there's a, a ton of artists that, you know, that they've recorded and, that, you know, they have radio play, but, you know, they, have, they haven't done live shows. So, you know, throughout the years, you know, there have been tons of artists that that were big, but, you know, no one's seen them in concert. And then and then but but then there are tons of artists that that do live performances and that, that they don't have a lot of like radio play or like, you know, put a lot of music out. So so it kinda goes half and half, but to really cut your teeth, it's just you know, if people are responding it it's really fun to be in the studio. It's really fun to write stuff and hang out with each other and vibe. But like the live performance is the dragon that I'm chasing the whole time. It's experiences like at the chop shop where you just like 
this is all I want. This is a rush. This is something mm -hmm. that I, I can't get in the world anywhere else. And like, most people's number one fear is public speaking. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, in that case, it segues right into my next question. Um, do you guys feel a touring musician has more credibility than a studio musician? Mm. No. Um, credibility, it depends on what we're speaking of. I mean, the Beatles, for instance, their best music was made in the studio and they never toured on it or performed it live. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, they're two different art forms, performing live and, and writing and recording are two totally different monsters. And they're equally as beautiful, um, but they're not the same thing. Yeah. If you can do them both, God bless it. Right. right. They come you know, um, but that's, it doesn't define you and your art. Do you guys I mean, you guys have created a litany of music over the years with all your different iterations of, you know, like I said earlier, Abstract Giants, Greenlands Music, Bad Wolf. Bob Rock, you guys have done a lot of music. Um, do you feel personally your music is better experienced live to get the full experience or listen to on wax to a person can listen to it over and over and over and really pick up on the intricacies of what you've created on the songs? I'll just say uh, there are definitely two different experiences. We play with a live band as green lights. So that's just automatically a different experience. But <clears throat> if you listen to the music, you know, the studio cuts, a lot of that is to beats that RP makes. So they sound a little different, you know what I mean? It's more like a, like a, I don't want to say a traditional hip hop experience, but it's more like the boom bap kind of aspect. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go to a live show, you're incorporating live musicians, guitar, bass, drums, you know, sax, keys. Yeah. So it's it's much it's a different experience and it's it's like a, almost like a almost a different song in some ways. But yeah, one hundred percent. I feel like RP should really speak to that because he's the producer of Greenlights. He makes yeah. all the music. No, I agree with you, man. I think the the uh, the the way that we approach stuff now is is changing though. So we're we're we definitely, you know, I make the beats and and then we kind of translate them live. But now we're starting to make all live songs together and then just playing them live as well. So we're kind of like combining like the the sample slash boom bap hip hop with actual live instrumentation mm -hmm. and uh, and even doing some separate songs that are completely live band oriented, which you'll see mm -hmm. that you would hear on Solid Gold Gravy. But the um, I think that there is, you know, I think it's a easy way to uh, a good way to kind of communicate with each other as far as how we want to create music, kind of coming up with an idea and we all build off of it. Mm. Uh, but I, I feel like live when people see us, um, it's it's there's a lot going on. So it's a it's a, an amazing experience too. Right. And might I just say our live shows, we interplay off of each other in a way that. I have rarely seen in any other live show. Um, we're engaged and we listen and magic happens every single effing time. All right. And uh, speaking of readers, hey, as somebody who's seen them perform many times live, I can attest a co-sign to everything they just said. <laughs> Thank you guys. They're amazing live. All right. So now, looking ahead, um, is there a specific venue in your mind's eye that you're just like, yeah, I want to be there. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm talking worldwide. Like, mm. huh. is there a place that you're just like, I want to see Green Lights perform here. This Red is where Rocks. I want to be. Ooh, Ooh, the yeah. Red Rocks uh, Amphitheater. That's the, the, the Denver. Denver. Yeah. That. Um, but even here in Chicago, I mean, we've to be performed at almost every venue except for like the United Center. <laughs> that's that's the venue that I, I would love to be 
Can we say like cities that. and not just venues? Oh, yeah. 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 I'd like to see us play in Prague. Ooh. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. I'd like to see Me that. Too. Yeah. I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see us play in yeah. Prague. Yes, yes. A little Eastern Bloc mm-hmm. tour. Just hop around the Baltic. <laughs> you know? yeah. That would be dope, yeah. Is there any musician out there that you guys would love to either perform with or collaborate with on an album? Ooh, Janelle Monae. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Wordsworth. Ooh. Okay. Uh, open Mike Eagle. All right, all But I think like a bucket list for me would, you know, do something. I mean, well, now, so, I mean, Fife is gone, but to do something with Tribe. Tribe. Yeah. Yeah, same with Daylight with like Dub being, you know, it's, uh, yeah, like for me, that yeah. one of those two. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking of like band wise, like another band that we'd like to mm. kind of perform with mm. and, and, mm. and tour with, you know what I mean? Neil and the Sniffers. Well, I kind of think of like yeah. uh, like the roots would be kind of the dream, you know, mm-hmm. or like uh, just touring around with another with another band to get an idea. Man, that's a loaded. That question. would be yeah. fun. There's, there's, there's so many. There's so many great artists. Um, there's a yeah. band from Miami called Mayday, and they have like a really dope live stage presence, energy, oh. rappers, and <clears throat> live musicians, and just like matches. Like similarly in terms of energy, like if one two, you know, would be a dope show. Nice. Mm. All right, guys. So we are at our last question. Mm-hmm. So we've come to the end of our journey for today. Um, the question I have for you is a bit of a hypothetical one. Now, um, I know your careers are in no way, shape, or form nearing the end, but hypothetically speaking. If your careers were to end today and you're all to walk away from music and done, is there a moment in your life that you could proudly hang your head on and say, yeah, that was the zenith of my career. Um, that's, that's, that's top notch right there. Mm. Can you draw back on your history of 20 years of making music and be like, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of all of it. Okay. You know, I am happy that we're still here making it and that and that we're still doing it. And then even if I were to walk away, knowing that each and every time that that I put my pen to pad or thumb to <laughs> thumb to keypad or what or whatnot, is that I that I, I gave it my all. Um, you know, not just doing my best, but like, you know, putting my heart, you know, in it and to express the things that I wanted to say and to give it full tail. You know, I have no regrets. I've loved every minute of it. Mm. And, um, you know, that's, you know, we're still here today, so. (laughs) Well, for me, I would say that um, I could never voluntarily walk away from this um, and remain a sane person. Mm. Um, But not to plug this album too hard, but the process that we went through in terms, we went on a vacation together and we wrote songs and we made meals and we talked to each other and reflected on our most painful and joyous moments and then wrote more songs. This album is um, so far something that I am most proud of Um, and I can't wait to share it and perform it and for us to go on our next vacation so we can write more music, you know, go swimming, come back, write some more songs, but yet I, I can't give it up. The thing that I would hang my hat on at the end of the day, my proudest achievement is being getting a song into the pandemics and protests exhibit at the Field Museum, Mm. which is somewhere that I would go to in a field trip. And I know that my teachers would be really happy to hear that they had a part of that. And also I wanna thank my parents. Um, That's like really a big part of it. And of course, all of the people who helped me 
uh, RP who helped me record that song and who uh, produced the beat. Um, like us working together, our friendship and and the things that come out of that is really the most important thing at the end of the day and the part that I reflect on the most warmly. So yeah, thank, oh. thank you guys. Oh, thank you, man. We love you, Bobby. Love you, Bobby. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would say that mine is a lot like what Shoni was saying. I feel like this record, this last album we made was something that was we, a, a new process, kind of. Uh, not kind of, it was a new process. And um, it just kind of, that. I feel like that process opens doors for more and different things and better things that we can continue doing. So it's not just, you know, a regular album. These albums continue... A, continue to evolve so when i made when we made this out al album solid gold gravy i feel like there was so much of everyone in it whether it was bob putting his comedic side into it or stoney singing the jingle or you know casa kicking a verse um it it was so it sounded so right sounded so right to me you know i th i think i would lean on just the sheer amount of music that we've all created I mean, we're talking about like hundreds, if not thousands of minutes of songs, you know, it's just, mm. I just think it's quite the achievement. And it's like people who run marathons, you know, it's like, there's like 1% of people who do that. It's like, there's even less who can say they've made that much music. Good music. Yeah, preface the good part. Like, I think we can all really be proud of that. So I think that's, hypothetically <clears throat> speaking, if we weren't able to make any more music, I think we can point to everything that we have made and be like, there's so many people who haven't heard it yet still. So I feel like there's still, there's still opportunity there for it to share it. And to, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be constantly available, you know? All right. Well, I thank you guys for taking the time out for speaking with me. Okay. And, uh, yeah. We love you, Kevin. Thank, thank you. you. Kevin. The love is equally reciprocated to all of you. Um, I'm just glad that uh, you're sharing some more of your inner spirits to the readers. So mm. more people, as you said, can, have eyes and ears on your music that might not have heard it yet. Yeah. Um, Cause trust audience when I say this, their music deserves to be heard. So. Um, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, and I, we look forward to whatever you guys got coming up next. Oh, it's gonna be Thank true. you.